Say what's cracking YouTube It's your boy 16 to life And I'm back like I'm on a pro violation Yard down Now for those of y'all that's new to my page In 1994 I got arrested I was eventually sentenced to 16 years plus life And I served 24 years straight In the California prison system During those times I accumulated some good stories And some insight on things related to California prison And I'm going to share some with y'all today if you like the video, hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment, and definitely hit that notification bell. That way, anytime I drop a story, you can hop on it ASAP whenever you're ready. Now, let's hop right up into this right here. So, what I'm talking about today is, man, according to reports released um, from the CDC, California Department of Corrections, you have a, a unique story. Two prisoners was killed in an attack uh in the process of stabbing another prisoner, man. So, uh, one of the dudes who was killed, uh, was 48 years old, had been in jail since 1994, roughly 28 years. According to the reports, he had life without the possibility of parole. Uh, the other guy who was killed, who was also, I guess, assisting him in the attack. Um, I believe he was 37 and he had life and had been down about 10 years. Um, now, the individual who they were attacking was a 68 year old man. He also had life and had been down about 15 years, man. And so, you know, some of you guys may be thinking like, damn, man, these two dudes was out here stabbing a 68 year old man. Well, excuse me. Yeah, man, that's, you know, that's, that's prison culture. You know, it's, it's definitely, um, it's definitely a rough, you know, hard in the paint business. And so, Everything I'm talking about is just merely speculation. I've done nothing more than read a few reports that was released um, by, you know, by the California Prison Department. But from what I read, the the 68 year old who was being attacked, who also had life, uh, he was in there for, I believe it was some attempted murder. So um, for the most part, I believe he had been in prison long enough for definitely to have his charges, you know, cleared as far as not having quote unquote bad charges and so um you know in my opinion whatever was the incident whatever the incident was about was something that had just you know come come up recently you know because had he been in jail on some bad charges i am i'm just assuming that it wouldn't have took 15 years to, you know to uh for him to get whatever people felt he had coming you know with that but that being said like i say a lot of people like like, well, damn, man, these dudes are jumping on basically a senior citizen, you know, well, man, prison, prison is, uh, prison is an unforgiving environment, you know, and who knows what it is that he's, this dude, uh, you know, was attacked for, you know, uh, he was in jail, I believe 15 years. So of course, being in jail that long, he definitely had a great idea of what was expected of him in prison. And what he was not supposed to do and what he could do and this and that. So like I say, I'm just assuming that by doing all that time, you know, and then, of course, he was on he was on a level four prison uh, prison out here known as High Desert. And it's an extremely dangerous prison, as all prisons are, you know, especially these level fours. And so um, now I seen the dude who who. So so what so what they're saying is he was being attacked by these. The 68 year old dude was being attacked by these two other dudes. Um, they have been given a warning to stop attacking him. Um, they fired a, a warning shot. I believe they may have fired a, um, what's known as like, it's, um, basically it's like a gun that shoots tear gas. And, uh, when those things happened and they didn't stop, then they were shot and killed by two separate guards. The guards in the towers have many 14, many 14s, which is a high power rifle. And they happen to shoot a two, two, three round, which is extremely dangerous, you know. And so um, I think I mentioned that one of the dudes who was attacking him was 48 years old, had been in jail for 28 years and had life without the possibility of parole. And so, you know, when some people hear that, some people may say, well, you know, this guy, uh, he had no hope and and, and uh, he basically wanted to die, you know, Um uh, but who knows, you know, who knows, man. Um, I know when I was doing time, I had a life sentence myself. A lot of people would say, oh, man, well, if I had life, I'd do this or I'd do that. You know, and um, whether you have hope or not, 
it's all about the dude. It's all up to the dude who's doing the time and who has the sentence, you know. Um, I've seen dudes who had life without parole uh, get their case overturned, um, go back to court and get out. You know, I've seen or at least heard of dudes who had life without parole come to jail when they was young, then have their sentence um, commuted by the, uh, by the uh, governor. And so there's never... Um, I guess there's never a time to give up hope. You know, anytime a person gives up hope, then there is no longer hope because if you doing the time and you don't have hope, then it's not going to be there for you. With that being said, though, um, you know, he had been in jail, uh, 28 years. So he definitely also knew the rules and regulations of prison and what the environment had to offer. So, uh, I'm sure he knew that at some point, if he continued to stab this dude, it was a great likelihood that he would be shot. And so, uh, yeah, you know, prison is just a cold environment. And so it, it reading this, it reminded me of a dude of, of a comment. Somebody had asked me in my comment section um, a few days ago. They asked me if I could talk about what were some of my close calls in prison. And honestly, now. Looking back on the whole situation, you know, knowing now what I, you know, what I knowing now, what I what I know now is I honestly think, man, every day was a close call. Every day was a close call because when you're in when you're in that type of environment around um, men who may or may not have any hope of going home, you're around a lot of men who feel that they have to act a certain way to be to be uh, received by the, you know, by the masses and accepted. It's a uh, it's definitely a dangerous environment. And then what really made me realize how, you know, um, how fortunate I was to come home, you know, um, from prison after doing all that time is by having life. Maybe I would say around 2013, 12, somewhere around there, they implemented a program that was called um, LTOP, uh, Long Term Offenders Pilot Program. And what this program was for to start um supplying inmates who had life with the skills to eventually be paroled you know uh such classes as conflict conflict resolution anger management uh drug drug management um victim awareness things like this and so there was one particular class that we took and, and there was we had a teacher by the name of mo and she had been working with prisoners for a long time and she had learned about the prison culture and she realized and learned that um, in this type of culture, a lot of men suppress emotions and feelings that that they have. You know, it's not cool to be over emotional about certain situations, but there's only a matter of time when there's only for only there's only a certain amount of time when any individual can suppress and not deal with the emotions that he type the, the type of emotions that he has. And so this is what makes men, especially in these situations, um so dangerous because you know you may be in prison for a while and you know your mom may pass away you may lose an important relationship something may happen to your son and being unable to come to the yard and express those things and let those emotions out is you're just building up anger you know you're just building up anger it's just like a time bomb waiting to go off and it may be something simple one day as you being in the cell and with someone and uh, the guard walks past and that dude is hoping for some mail and he don't get no mail. You say something to him and he just explodes. So me knowing all these things now is what makes me realize how fortunate I was to come home. So like I was saying, we were taking these classes and this lady Mo, she wanted these guys to talk about and express um, things that may have they may have never dealt with, you know. And so you had a lot of guys stand up and start talking. A lot of these guys, you know known killers on the yard you had been knowing or hearing things about or been around for a while a lot of these dudes would get to talking about some of the trauma that they experienced growing up as a child and they broke down and started crying you know uh a lot of the stories that 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 well every all the story everything that was spoke about in the group was supposed to stay in the group so i won't go into great detail but it just made me realize that you never knew who you was in the cell with or or, or what you was dealing with some of these dudes had been molested by older uh siblings or cousins loved ones you know some of them had been seen trauma abused by parents and this type of stuff and so not dealing with that type of stuff and being in an environment where it's cool to be violent to be a uh, macho you know to not show not show caring feelings or emotions to toward other humans 
really made prison a dangerous, dangerous place, man. And so, like I said, it was where I would hear some of these stories that made me realize like, damn, you know, it's, it's really, you never know what a person is going through or what a person is dealing with. That's going to make a person erupt. Uh, there was one dude, um, and I'm not going to go deep into his situation, but for whatever reason, loud music triggered him. It brought back some horrible memories of some experiences that he had. And, you know, you have people in there playing loud music all the time. And he would constantly ask his neighbor, you know, could you please turn that down, man? Could you please turn that down? And so, you know, who would think that just playing music could possibly make someone um, get in a position to where they want to harm you and stuff? And so. Like I said, it was after I took these classes, hearing some of the stories of some of these dudes realizing like, man, you can be in the cell with a person and the dude just snap and you never really have an idea that this person is this person is, you know, experiencing um, experiencing post-traumatic stress uh, from whatever he may have experienced at a at an earlier period in his life, man. So it just made me realize that that every day was a close call when you're doing time with people who have possibly suffered some trauma and some people who have lost hope. You know, you have people in there who who have a bunch of time and they have no hope. You know, you have people in there who may only have 10 years, maybe somebody important in their life pass away and then they give up. And that's all it takes for them to just uh, just to basically go on one. So, you know, just just seeing that story, man, just made me um, just made me think about basically how fortunate I was to come home pretty much unscathed from all that time that I'd done, you know, because also I've heard stories about people on the yard being stabbed, being attacked, and a guard will go to shooting his gun, and he may hit somebody 200 yards away who wasn't even involved in that incident. It's just so many different dynamics that goes on in prison. Uh, that makes me feel and realize how fortunate I was to do all that time and come home. Like I say, this was a unique story where you had two people killed. Um, now the 68 year old dude who they was attacking, uh, he suffered serious injuries according to these reports and he still hospitalized himself. So, uh, that's just a little something, you know, to add to that story and to think about, man, prison is definitely a dangerous place. You already know what it is though. It's your boy 16 to life. Resume normal program.